Good evening. Um, my name is Eli Burstein, and today I'm uh, leading the Google Anti-Abuse Research Team, and today with Oren from Checkpoint. Uh, we're going to tell you about uh, how we hunted down Goodigan and how we took it down eventually. Um, so what is Goodigan? Uh, Goodigan was one of the largest escalation of last year. Uh, it is of interest because it was the first large-scale old stealing uh, malware, which take it a turning point. We believe in the evolution of malware. And we have a content over a million Google accounts who are affected by this botnet. Uh, so what is OAuth, very briefly, for those who don't know? How many of you know what OAuth is? Can you raise your hand? Only half of it. Okay, so just very briefly, OAuth is a uh, specification which has been used more and more, and the idea is uh, a lot of your, of your account has been used by other apps uh, for identifications. For example, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Google, or Facebook are using it. And the idea is when you connect to another services, you don't want to give a password or you want to restrict the ability of people to use a service. So for example, you want to only have an account, a, an app to read your Twitter timeline and not post on your behalf. So to have those passwordless authorization and delegation mechanisms, the specification is called OAuth. And OAuth tokens have been used uh, by, any, by very large providers and they are also used in Android uh, when you want to request uh, access to one of the accounts available on the, end, on the phone and obviously uh, for Google account as well. So that's what OAuth is, and so this is a passwordless uh, delegation mechanism which is used universally now, I would say. So, um, briefly, what, what happened? Uh, in about, about two years ago, around March, uh, there was a malware, an adware, uh, called Snippy, Snappy, sorry, which was uh, discovered by Checkpoint, and this malware is relevant because it was the first one uh, to weaponize uh, ex uh, exploits, which were usually originally used uh, by the enthusiast community to root the phone and to do advanced customizations and stuff like this, or unlocking the phone. And so there was the first one and the precursor of what's going to come. A few months after that, uh, a company called Cheetah Mobile uh, uncovered a uh, large malware family called Ghost Push. And Ghost Push is known uh, because they innovated in the space of Android malware by providing a persistency across uh, uh, reboots, but also flash. So what they would do is they would patch the recovery system uh, to enable a persistence to uh, resetting the default systems uh, settings. And then a year after that, and that's the main event we're going to describe today, uh, Goodigan do surface, uh, again discovered by Checkpoint. And Goodigan innovate, as we said, because they are using now all tokens uh, to do some of fraudulent abuse. And then a few weeks after, a few days actually, after it has been discovered and we started to collaborate with Checkpoint, uh, we were able to take down Goodigan and we're going to tell you about this brief period of time. Uh, before we get started and we delve into the detail on how uh, Goodigan works, let's provide a very rough overview of how it works because it's a fairly piece, complex piece of software, so just to give you a rough idea of what it looked like. Uh, first, uh, good, uh, goes, Goodigan, uh, is known to take a known APK and repackaged it uh, with extra stuff, extra stuff being malicious, and then they push it through social engineering or other channels to the users. Upon execution, uh, this uh, piece of malware will register to a command control who do registration systems, and then go and connect to the exploit server, uh, and the exploit server will return back the, no the needed exploit to root the phone. After that, it's going to connect to a uh, fraudulent app uh, or ads related command control will tell you what to perform as abuse. And finally, it would either do uh, attempt to do Play Store, fake comment and install, or will do uh, some sort of uh, ad injection into the device, uh, showing pop-ups for ads, which is not Google related, but uh, they've been doing a few ads networks. So that's basically in a nutshell how uh, Gulligan works. So today we're going to cover five points. Uh, Oren is going to start by telling you about how the infection works and what are the mechanical detail behind the infections, and we'll recount how the uh, checkpoint discovered uh, the backend infrastructure behind Gulligan. Then I'll come back and I will tell you how they monetize and how they were using the malware to make money. We will talk about uh, who are the affected devices based on our telemetry, and finally, uh, how we were able to take it down. Um, Oren, the all yours. Thank you, Ilan. Okay, 
So in order for us to understand Gulligan as a botnet, uh, we first need to understand Gulligan as a Trojan, so as the Android client of this botnet. Uh, so the Gulligan kill chain is comprised of several key steps. Uh, the first of which is uh, decoding the payload. This is a payload that is embedded uh, into the Gulligan uh, APK. Once decoded, among other things, this payload is responsible for downloading, dynamically downloading, a rootkit. Uh, this rootkit is used uh, to root the device, uh, and if successful, uh, Gulligan is now free uh, to install its persistency kit utils. Um, most interesting of which uh, is a util that enables Gulligan to infect the local Google Play process. Okay, so starting with the uh, payload decryption. So typically the payload would be in uh, one, of, uh, one of Gulligan's assets. Uh, the asset is typically named close.png. Uh, needless to say, this is not a PNG. This is, uh, in fact, another APK. More precisely, it's a zip containing a DEX, so an Android executable. Uh, and this DEX is uh, XOR uh, encrypted. So uh, this is the file structure of, uh, of said uh, uh, close.png. So you have the payload, uh, and prepended to the payload, you have the XOR key. So that's 10 bytes of XOR key that are used uh, in a loop. Uh, and you have a header and a footer. The header and the footer contain the same values, uh, five bytes each, uh, but in swapped order. Uh, and before starting to, to decrypt uh, the payload, uh, it is checking uh, that val1 equals val1 and val2 equals val2. So this is some kind of uh, weird and primitive uh, checksum. Uh, and then it decrypts the actual payload. Uh, so this is a Python code uh, that emulates this description. Uh, you can see that the key um, is uh, within the within the PNG, uh, and that's just a simple XOR algorithm. Uh, and once we've decoded this payload, uh, we can uh, now download uh, the rootkit. So what is Gulligan using for a rootkit? Uh, did they develop any of their own exploits? No, uh, no time to do that. They just used uh, some third party uh, service, Kingroot, this is a very famous, uh, very famous uh, routing solution in Android. Don't think there's any need to introduce it uh, to anyone that's, that's familiar with the Android ecosystem. Uh, and the exploits that were within this uh, rootkit uh, were relevant for Android uh, between three and four. Okay, uh, say we have uh, successfully routed the device. Uh, now we are free to install the persistency kit. What does the persistency kit do? Uh, a couple of things. So there are a couple of different utils within the persistency kit. They are all uh, written into the system partition. Of course, you cannot write into the system partition uh, in Android uh, unless you root. Uh, we did not enumerate all the different utils, uh, but interestingly, you can see this uh, .ls util. Um, uh, which is uh, the SU binary, uh, and it's installed, and then uh, its permissions are uh, changed and frozen so that the SU binary would be encapsulated just for the Gulligan malware to use. Uh, another interesting util is the, uh, is the inje injection model that we will talk about soon. Uh, and another interesting feature uh, is patching the install recovery script. Uh, so this was first done by, uh, by Gulligan's predecessor, uh, GhostPush. Um, it was considered a relatively new technique, uh, and it enables to survive uh, factory reset. So very, very annoying um, for infected users. Uh, okay, once we have all the tools in place, uh, we can move into the fun part, uh, which is injecting code into the Google Play process. How does that work? So the injector model of Gulligan is using the ptrace plus dl open approach. Uh, this is a very common approach among uh, power users in Android. 
uh, and it uses it to inject uh, a shared object, IGPLD. The names are terrible. Uh, this IGPLD is uh, in of itself another loader, uh, but this time it loads, it, it dynamically loads into the Google Play process an additional DEX. Uh, so DEX is a code written in Java. Uh, Gulligan developers would prefer developing their code, most of their code in Java. Uh, so this DEX contains a broadcast receiver. Um, broadcast receivers are uh, basically Android uh, listeners that listen to different system events or events from different apps. Uh, so this receiver uh, was listening to uh, power events, uh, devices connected to charger or uh, disconnected, connectivity event, um, Wi-Fi, etc., and screen on, screen off events. Why does it care about these events? It doesn't. These are just random events that enable it to arbitrarily uh, wake up. What does it do once it wakes up? Uh, it downloads yet another DEX. This DEX is the real moneymaker, uh, and, it, and, and it contains the actual implementation uh, of the fraud logic that would be, um, that would be appended uh, to Google Play's code. Uh, so, the injection module that they used uh, was also not uh, code that they developed themselves. This is open source code uh, that you can find in different uh, GitHub repositories and in many Chinese blogs. Uh, so you can see that you have some kind of helper method that you can provide uh, an app. It will give you the PID and then you use this PID uh, to inject uh, a shared object just like uh, Gulligan does. Cool. Uh, now that we have a basic concept of the, the inner working of Gulligan, uh, let's talk a, a little bit about how uh, we discovered. Okay, uh, so our first encounterment with Gulligan uh, was with uh, a patient zero um, uh, device. That was, a, that was a customer device infected with a Gulligan dropper. Uh, and we found uh, several interesting IOCs that make us, made us look into this uh, specific binary. Um, I, I, most of them were related to dropping uh, or to routing. Um, and among them was this not non-interesting string, oversee adjust read ready. So some kind of reference to an in-memory database uh, seems completely uh, boring, but on the same time, unique enough uh, to use that to find our Gulligan uh, samples. So we thought we would do just that. Uh, so we've searched uh, for this string in all kinds of places, also in Google, uh, and uh, we found this blog. So this is a Chinese coding blog, uh, and this specific post is talking about how to configure uh, a proxy. Good enough. Um, it has a reference to our string. Uh, and lo, be, lo and behold, it also has uh, credentials to the, to the proxy we're configuring. Uh, since, we had, um, since we had the IP of the first proxy that Gulligan is talking to, uh, we were able to try these credentials. Uh, and conveniently enough, they worked. Uh, so this proxy was in fact uh, a load balancer used uh, to balance load for the whole Gulligan campaign, uh, and it enumerates the different Gulligan servers. Um, awesome. Uh, so now that we have this information and we have reverse engineered more and more samples, we were able to get a picture of what the Gulligan botnet actually looks like. Uh, and this is uh, the sim simplified version. Uh, so you can see that we have um, Amazon servers, and we have Chinese servers. Um, after we've started uh, the takedown operation uh, with Google, with Google uh, a lot of the Amazon servers started disappearing and the whole uh, botnet immigrated to Chinese servers. Uh, but we will, describe, uh, we will describe how the botnet worked when both, uh, when both uh, uh, geolocations existed. Uh, so let's try to look at the Gulligan kill chain again, this time from a network perspective. So we have an infected device. This device is registering 
to the Gulligan uh, botnet, uh, delivering interesting metadata about itself, build, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then it moved to talk with the Chinese server. Uh, so it's talking with this resource, ggview, uh, which uh, delivers a dynamic link to the exploit kit. Uh, once exploited, it's talking to uh, the IGQ, uh, the IGQ resource on the same server. Uh, this uh, resource is in charge of delivering uh, the dynamic libraries uh, that will be injected uh, into Google Play. Uh, and this service is also in charge of uh, delivering the actual fraud commands. Uh, so uh, what APKs should be downloaded, what comments should be made in Google Play, uh, stuff that uh, Eli will explain more about. Uh, and an interesting feature is that when uh, the botnet has started to evolve, uh, we had a dedicated service that's only doing fraud, uh, and IGQ uh, was only in charge of, uh, of uh, injected libraries. Uh, so we see that they're um, getting more speciality uh, with their services. Um, that's about it. Ready to talk about money? Thanks, you, Ryan. So, as I mentioned, um, we, we looked at the fraud module, so we after Checkpoint found the malware, they reached out to, to us, Google, and we like, oh, we have this new thing, and uh, we believe they are using, they are, storing, uh, they are stealing our token, and you should look into it because <clears throat> it's about a million, so of course we went into uh, escalation mode, and we were collaborating, and so we spent a lot of time trying to understand what were they were doing with the tokens, uh, because the token you have on charger, it's fun and very powerful, you can use them for many, many things, it turned out that the only thing they were caring about was making money. Uh, and more specifically, they were doing two things. Uh, the first one, they were trying to do app boosting, so it's directly relevant to Google. They were trying to basically uh, sell installs and ratings to some of their clients. And they were also doing uh, ad injection in the sense that they had a way to trigger pop-ups into uh, your phone. And we're going to talk about how they were being able to do both of those. So. Uh, for the Play Store app boosting, this is the one we understand the best uh, because we had the most telemetry around it. Uh, they basically do something like that. Um, they take the old token, and the reason why they wanted to use them was to interact with the Play Store. Uh, on your Android phone, when you request an app in store, uh, you actually do not, we don't have your credential on your phone. We have this long term token, and we exchange it, and we basically go in the App Store. Uh, when you click on, in, on the Play Store, you click install and then basically download the app and do this uh, through auto authentications. Um, they were providing to their client what we call a full package, which is a fake install, some reviews. So not all of them were with review, but they were having also the ability to deliver reviews and ratings. So review will be like great app or something like that. And also a search term. So what they were trying to do is search for a specific keyword, um, let's say battery saver, and then uh, scroll pretend to be a click and then do the install and then leave a review. So that's what they were trying to do in a nutshell. And what you see on the left screen is if you were to get your phone being infected by Gulligan, you will get those icons who would pop up and they will, will look like uh, what people might ex expect. So for example here, uh, two of them were installing something which would look like a game center. It's obviously not a real game center, but they try to appear as an excuse as possible so the user is not triggered by uh, the app. And so it was all done very, very quietly to try to not raise uh, user awareness. So one other thing which actually took us even a few, a long time to figure out, even after the takedown was done, was to understand why in, on hell would they need to extract try to tokens. So one thing we didn't make sense at the beginning was uh, you have to do the fraud from the device, so why would you go to the point of extracting the token out of the, of, the, of the phone and put it into the cloud? And that was the reason why we, we keep investigating until we had some sort of satisfying answer. After looking and understanding better how it worked, uh, we figured out that it's probably because um, the token has a way for them to emulate device. So in the last few years, uh, we've made a lot of progress on the Play Store to detect very efficiently fake installs. A lot of people try to do, you know, ASEO, application search optimizations, which is basically try to outrank your competition through uh, various means. 
And so we have built a lot of defenses um, based on machine learning and also heuristics to actually detect those things. So as a result, uh, they grew more and more disparate. So their plan is now to attempt to masquerade as a real user. And the easiest way for them to do that at that point is to be uh, on a real phone with real user data on a real app. And so the plan is to try to, to trigger, their plan was to trigger the install from the Play Store or appearing to coming from the, the real app on the Play Store from the device and do this. So that's why we believe they were going after the Android token. Um, the way you do uh, this kind of abuse is in four stages. The first one is you take the account database, which is on your phone, and it's protected, and you should not be in, have access to it except if you root, and that's why, and the rootkit thing, uh, where you basically do a cat, and they get all the token and all the things. There might be other things, like every time you add an account to your Android phone, like Facebook and so forth, they're also in the database. So they, create, they, they take all the databases, and then they basically perform a SQL like query on it, and what they're looking for is very specifically Android Market or Android Secure, which are the one you need for uh, specifically doing the play, uh, play abuse. So they're not looking for Facebook or any other account you have, they're just looking for those. So then when they have those tokens, they go to the uh, Gulligan command and control server and say, hey, here's all my parameters, and please tell me what to do. So. Uh, basically, it's a two-way process. So they send a request, which actually contains a lot of information, uh, way more than we were expecting at the beginning, like IMAE, IMSAI, uh, phone make, phone model, the token, as we mentioned, the Android version, the phone carrier, the country, the, I, the public IP, a lot of information that you, which has no business to be there because it's not directly used, but they do that. And then, uh, weirdly enough, uh, the server not only tell you which app to download from the Play Store, uh, also which search, search term to use and if you need to put a rating and what would be the rating and the comment, but also what phone information to spoof. And that was a very, very weird point for a while because you already have the phone. So the phone knows who it is, so it should just be who it is. And actually it was not the case, so we were very puzzled by that. And after, uh, looking more into what happened, we figured out that some of the, um, the fake install we saw from Goodigan thanks to server-side telemetry were actually coming from devices which are not rooted, like uh, Nexus 5. And we literally had someone uh, giving us access to the phone physically, and also we did a forensic analysis of the phone, and it was not rooted, it was not compromised in any way. So what happened is they tried to increase the pool of device they had by uh, having a another way to infect the other devices with non-root app, but who will be able to do the effect request. So what, the reason why they were exfiltrating the token and all the information from the phone was, oh, we know this user and we can create this realistic profile, so you can make this fake HTTP request uh, from this app which were sideloaded from another store. So the phone we got was an access uh, it was like a, f a phone which was Android 5 and, and above, so it was not rooted but had sideloaded app, and those apps were making HTTP requests uh, to the Play Store with the information. So the w reason why we believe they were uploading all this information to the cloud was to try to diversify the pool of, of device because they realized they cannot root anything above Android 4. Um, so when you're on the phone and you need a token, what you do is you do the OAT token exchange. And so basically what it does is it converts your long-term token, the one you have on your phone, to a short-term token which is used to do uh, communication with the Play Store. So basically it's exchanging this. And uh, while there was some confusion at the beginning after investigating, we realized that the only thing they were doing is trying to get a token to do play abuse. Uh, and this abuse is hard-coded, we're pretty sure it's uh, the case. And then with that, when they have this information, they actually use injections that was described by Oren to actually instrument and make the Play Store uh, go inject the, uh, the search query, as the user would do, go to the app, pretend to click on it, uh, and then uh, install the app with the package manager, which is a uh, standard on Android platform. And then optionally, sometimes they would like add a rating, like you know, five out of five, great app, or it might be in other languages, and they would do that quite a bit. So that's basically how it worked, and that's how they were using the old token. Uh, so again, that's a, a new trend that we haven't observed yet. Uh, but, uh, and to give you an idea of how it works, um, that's basically what you get. You basically create a HTTP request 
And the HTTP request contains a ton of information, including uh, the token you need, and that's your form of authentication. So basically, the token is used uh, as a way for us to know which user it is and to ensure that the user will count it over their account and so forth. And it's all based on HTTPS, uh, HTTPS request, right? Very standard. Um, what's interesting about these views is uh, what we didn't know about Gulligan specifically at the time uh, when it started, we had a lot of defense in place and uh, all the fake intel were already discounted and then we came back and we cleaned up everything else, including we did suspend uh, the app and the developer which were uh, abusive. So they were, they were the one benefiting from it, the app had no values for the user uh, and so we suspended this app as well. So there was, at the end of the escalation, no impact on the Play Store and no uh, game ranking. Uh, we also observed uh, in some of the sample uh, ad injections, uh, we still don't know which network it is, uh, and I can explain why. This is what you see. So what happened is uh, they abuse the root privileges to insert themselves into the accessibility, which allow you to overlay the UI uh, with whatever you want. And what they were doing is we're popping up a uh, real app. So you, the thing you see on the left side is a screenshot of a real phone where we actually tested the system and tried to see where it was going. And it's really hard to know who is behind it because there is a lot of attribution washing, which means they go through many, many uh, measurement platforms like uh, to measure the click rate and this goes through a, a ton of redirect chains. So we can't tell for sure uh, who was behind it, but they were advertising uh, legitimate apps. So it means that someone from those apps were buying in good faith install or promotion and as a result were getting installed from a botnet. Uh, so hopefully we were able to remove it and so they now getting installed which are legitimate from real user and so hopefully it's better also for those publishers. Um, thanks to the telemetry of Gulligan itself, uh, we look at what they had and uh, we believe they were making sometimes 35 million clicks a day. That means that 35 million installed, it just means 35 million clicks. Uh, some of them might actually come from other channels. As we mentioned, those were legitimate apps, so they may have like, you know, some of these might be the Gulligan stuff and some would might be uh, advertisement on the website or maybe other stuff, we're not sure. So it's basically the volume we, we saw. Um, in terms of affected devices, um, it's very standard in terms of uh, phone makers. Uh, the only thing to point out for people who are not familiar with the Indian market, Micromax is a very, very popular uh, phone maker both in India and Asia. And so it's not surprising. So it's a very normal distribution you would expect into an uh, emerging country. And uh, as we said, uh, the exploit kit only works for Android 3 and 4. So we only saw Android versions which were uh, KitKat and Jellybean. They make up of all other things. We did find extra devices, as we said, which were like five and above thanks to the telemetry, but they were not infected by, uh, by, by Gulligan itself. Uh, in terms of distribution of where those devices come from, 90% uh, of those come from India, and the top eight countries make up for 50% of the infections. Um, because Europe and North America have very are more recent devices, they were not so much affected, so we basically, they mainly untouched. Uh, so how do we clean up this? Uh, to do this, uh, we had to do uh, a two-pronged approach. Uh, so the first thing we had to do is work with third party, including Shadow Server, to be able to uh, sync all the domains. So we have isolated the sample, and then we worked to make sure we had all the domains and we work to, to make sure those domains were sinkholed, so we prevent the exfiltration of the token. Do remember here that we cannot, uh, for people who didn't have trusted boot, uh, asking them to uh, do factor reset will not have done anything because of a persistence mechanism, so we had to have a way to prevent the exfiltration of the token because any other remediation mechanism on the device would have failed. So we first had to do this take down and uh, as we said, it was during Thanksgiving weeks, so a lot of people were out, but still we were able to work with a major, um, with all the people needed which would be involved, including DNS, um, sorry, domain uh, sellers and uh, shadow server and other people to actually come up with a strategy. We think all the domain, it was step one. And the second step is we revoked all the tokens. We have a list of all the tokens affected, so we basically, for security measure, remove all of them. Um, if you want to see the sinkhole efficiency, uh, this validates why it was so important. Uh, over the last year, we blocked over 50 million attempts of, uh, of token exfiltrations. 
it doesn't mean there is 50 million people infected by Gulligan. It just means that those device members have been wake up and then they will send it again and people can't really remove it because factory reset. So they know about it, just, just decided that they will keep the phone anyway. And so uh, about 50 million of those tokens have been stopped and there's a distribution match very closely to one we observed uh, from the initial wave. Uh, we also had a huge uh, sweat uh, in, uh, in March. Uh, when we look at the temperature of the sinkhole, we see this huge jump. And you're like, oh my God, uh, something is happening. Uh, Gulligan is back and there's like 400, half a million token, et cetera, per day. What happened is just like the sinkholing analytic was changed by Shadow Server. And so in reality, it's still active, but this is just blocked. So it's effective at the moment. Uh, one thing we want to point out, and that's very important for people who reach out to us, or if you reach out to any other big company, try to understand that when we try to notify our user, it's very difficult. When you have to warn a million people that they've been infected, you have to make sure A, it's in their language, and B, you're able to reach them. So reaching out to user is not that easy. We use the combination of a notification on phone, uh, sending an email to the account, or sending an SMS. And we had to translate, of course, the notification in many, many languages as well as the support page because people will be concerned. And you don't want to create panic. You want to say to people, hey, we know about this. Your account has been compromised. It is OK. Here's what happened. Here's what you can do. Here's what's not going to work. And here's what you should do. And so the notification of the user is for us the hardest part of the um, as a tech down. It's not like the technical means when you work with people who knows about botnet and are very efficient, it's very, in a way, easy because you, you work among peers. Uh, notifying user at scale has been a huge challenge and making sure that people understand and can take proper decision was very important. So take away about uh, this investigation. A, uh, if you haven't, the main takeaway for you guys who work on botnet is uh, we believe uh, old based botnet is an emerging threat and you're going to see more of those. So if you don't know what old is, you should look at it. We'll expect it to also target additional services for other reasons. Uh, a lot of people use old now to delegate uh, access, passwordless access to their app. So if you have an app who do that, you should be careful about it because it will happen. Uh, second is, and we know that the first time we do it uh, publicly on record, but we love to collaborate with everyone. So if you are aware of a botnet on Android or malware or social banking on Android and you want to talk to us or on desktop or on anything, please come and work with us. We love to collaborate. Security is the responsibility of all of us and there is no way one company can secure the internet, but all together we can. So please uh, reach out anytime you want. Uh, and finally, uh, we're really grateful of everyone who worked with uh, Checkpoint and Google to help us to do the takedown very efficiently. Uh, there's a lot of people which are not there today, but really participated and helped, including Shadow Server. Uh, very active people even during Thanksgiving weeks. Uh, so we hope uh, you enjoy the, the talk, and we're going to take the question, but we're going to take them offline. Sure. Hello. Hello.